Good evening, Papua New Guinea. I'm your host, Godwin Eki, and welcome to Coca-Cola Sports Scene. It's great to have your company. I know it's been a very busy weekend of fun for all you sports enthusiasts. I know it's been very hot as well. But for now, let's take a look at the weekend sporting briefs. Fighters were gauged according to their demonstrations and techniques, according to the criteria of the PNG Taekwondo Federation. Clubs had a tendency to use different styles, and the sessions would allow for all fighters to be on level terms. Australian Taekwondo master Andy Rutten required all fighters to demonstrate their level of skills in a range of different combinations which included knee lifting, as well as blocks and punches. The sessions also served the purpose of updating fighters on current strategies used overseas, and prepare the PNGTF for international tournaments like the 3rd Australian Taekwondo Open and the 2014 Oceania Championships. One of the fighters who took part was Pacific Games gold medalist in the under 80 kilogram division, Colin Kokin. My first competitive fight was in 2011. That was the selection for the 2011 ISP Games. In that tournament, I came first and that was my first time selected to the BNT to represent the country in the 2011 South Pacific Indian Swapper that was held in New Caledonia. The Public Seven Soccer Association began its season with the opening matches featuring over six teams spread across six divisions. Normally used to hosting a Curry FC, the IPA Oval in Port Moresby saw good footy action in the under-19 division as City United FC took on ITI Musa United in a stalemate nil all draw on ground one. There was also good action in the men's A and B league as well as the women's division which saw Horo in blue dominate a young Baogi's team winning their match 1-0. Organizers had said that while there were a number of forfeits, it was still early in the competition and this was not a major concern at present. Defence Rugby Union Football Club fought back for a gritty and narrow 11-10 win over arch-rivals University Piggies in the A-grade semi-finals of the Capital Rugby Union competition. University had taken an early lead and looked set to maintain their good surge in the finals until a steal and a runaway try placed off on the defence boys' shoulders. The imminent victory was further announced when a penalty 19 metres out was successfully converted. The victory came in at a price with a number of defence players needing assistance after the match. And there you have it, all your weekend spotting briefs. We'll go for our first break, so stick around. Welcome back to the program. If you've just joined us now, you're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Uh, Jeremy travelled to Malalawa in the Gulf province and he had a chat with Peter Aglua, High Performance Coordinator with PNG Sports Foundation. Okay, right now we're at uh, Malalawa uh, High School, which is in the uh, Karoma district of Gulf province. Right here at the back here, you can see this uh, field here. It's a natural field. It's the, one of the best uh, natural fields in uh, uh, Papua New Guinea. And uh, here the story goes that uh, during wet season, the baby crocodiles used to come here, you know, and uh, they used to hunt for the, you know, whatever. But now uh, we didn't see any crocodiles here. We have uh, the young athletes from Gulf province, uh, mostly from the schools, uh, Keroma High School, as well as uh, Malalawa. And of course, Don Bosco, some athletes are here too, and uh, they are in a training camp. About a month ago, we had the inter-school carnival here. It was a big thing. 
And now the Galp uh, provincial government, backed up by the uh, administration and team Galp management, they are now looking at the schools to do the selection to represent Galp in athletics at the six PNC Games in Lyon, Morabe Province. So, uh, the PNC Sports Foundation, uh, we are meant to be going out and the developing sports. We saw this an opportunity to come up from Port Moresby, which is only three hours drive from uh, the city, and uh, we have been here. We are putting resources into it and. Uh, uh, everything into it and of course uh, with our connection MTV, Post Korea National, the media is here. It's a big day, it's going to be a grand uh, finale finish here and uh, this afternoon, uh, this Friday is the competition. They've been learning skills in, since Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, skin pentasol. You know these kids are just like horse, you know they keep going and they are stuff as a crocodile. They are going and we have this uh, race all day long and uh, we just saw the completion of the long jump, men's uh, long jump. And they are doing uh, uh, distances like, you know, 5.5, 5.6 uh, meters in for the schoolboys. This is uh, too good, too good. And the girls are going to 4.6, 4.7. That's also very good. And we are very happy that um, we're getting results from the camp because we are doing a skills camp, strength and conditioning, everything, training methods. We have athletes going here. Uh, as well as the coaches. Coaches are taught how to refine the coaching techniques and all that. So they have even got a, a, a training program done. So as they go back starting next Monday, they get seriously into it. And it's now up to the provincial government and Tim Galp management to find the necessary uh, resources to send them to lay and make the people of Galp proud. Now, considering the fact that th these are high school students, how would you rate their performances in terms of, well, say, for example, with the national championships that had occurred over in Kokopo, how would you rate these students that are here now? Okay, I want to say that uh, the results are just as good as any other uh, top athletes from uh, the secondary and high schools. Uh, but uh, the big thing is that uh, these uh, Gulf, uh, students from Gulf province, they are tall, you know, they are tall. And because of the height, uh, they are striding up uh, the 30, 40 meters up here into the long jump pit. They are jumping, running, they are sprinting like wild horses. And I can tell you, there's a big potential here. The big plus something true. I'm really impressed. It's an all-time coach. Long-time coach is that there's a lot of potential in golf. And as they say, you come to Kerama, not yet you saw it. Okay, in athletics, if you want to be a good runner or jumper, you've got to basically get your knee right to your uh, stomach here up here and get your heel back to your buttocks and you just whip it and that's it no one is going to hold you you've got a gold medal now in terms of future preparation what are you hoping or what are you expecting at the end of of the the week-long training camp okay every weekend on saturdays uh golf athletes will have trial they'll have the trial competitions here and uh, if the central province and ancient city athletes are ready I know there is a track at Grego High School, and uh, if there is a competition, they'll go down there for a, a lead-up competition, and uh, eventually, uh, whoever goes to lay, I can assure you, golf athletes, even the, the school kids, they can be very competitive. Okay, my uh, advice to everybody around Papua New Guinea is that all team managers have to look to the schools, look at the young talent, raw talent in the schools. That's what PNC Games is all about. And I would like to ask people from the Community Development Division and the Provincial Sports Coordinators to really look into the schools, not only athletics, but the ball games, and pick up talent there and groom them up and send them uh, to LA, because that's where the other young people of Papua New Guinea will go there. Of course, we have the national federations there. They're looking for talent, and they select them. And that's how we get the raw talent uh, from the provinces, and uh, we train them up and get them to other competitions and higher level and they will do us proud uh, in future PNC, PNC games as well as the Pacific games. We are here because we have seen talent, especially in the sprints. We have seen uh, uh, two girls, particularly from this school, Malalava, and uh, they will they will in the future after uh, my S retired, of course, uh, when Fair Whistle retires, uh, we definitely will uh, get girls from here. Uh, two of them are online, and I hope that they go to lay and they saw the talent and the athletic union takes note of it. Of course, the jumpers, we've just completed a competition here. They are also good. They're, they're athletic, the build looks good. They're doing about 5'6", and uh, going towards 5'7", and I think that's very good. 
And of course, um, in the distance, we have um, uh, two girls here who really look good. They outrun the boys, and uh, my goodness, uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. Peter Aglua, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> we'll go for our break now, and coming up next, we take a look at the SPP and G Hunters. SDP and G Hunters have returned to the winner's circle following a hard-fought 25-24 victory over the Sunshine Coast Falcons at Calabong Oval, Kokopo over the weekend. It was a decisive field goal from Captain Israel Eliab, his second of the season with just under two minutes left on the game clock to break the deadlock and the hearts of the Falcons in their round 20 clash. We're empty at that time, but now, as you can see, the Yes, the referees this afternoon, Tyson Brock is the referee. The SPP and Giantus came back from their losing streak with a golden kick from skipper Israel Eliab to walk away with the winner's tag. The local side put an 18-6 lead on the Falcons in the first half, which was reduced to 18-12 after the first 40 minutes. Locker now with a little bit of grubber kick, the chase is coming in and Dianaya is regathered. Eliab, who resorted to kicking duties, slotted all four goals and played an important role in the Adex Wera try by throwing the last pass when he turned the ball inside to send his winger racing away for a 40 meter try. And Wera, he's heading for the try line and he'll score under the post. 5'8", Dion Ayer scored one of the four tries, while centre Jason Talley, recently drafted into the squad, proved he is the cutout for this level of Australian second tyre competition with the double. Jason Talley, Waltowap Wera, he put Jason Talley through for his second try. For Falcons fullback Sam Wright, winger Paul McQuinn, second rower Ruben Bailey, and interchange Joe Labwin almost gave the Falcons a drawn match with their stunning footies. Falcons still with the ball and I think they've crossed over the score. Yes, they have. The Antis now have three wins in a row at Calabon Oval and are certain to gain much needed confidence from the win as they head into next Saturday's important match against the Belly Bears. And the field goal has been kicked by the captain Israel Eliab. Coach Michael Marum will be making sure to call up a strong side to be in the top five sports, which are currently dominated by the Northern Pride. Our boys are now currently on the sixth placing. They'll take on seventh placing Burley Bears in round 21 next week in Kokopo. Well, there you have it. All you Hunters fans in Kokopo, come on down to Calabong Oval and treat yourself to a feast of booty action. Welcome back. The last two athletes to leave the country for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Scotland were Stanford Kawale and Colin Akara with assistant coach and mentor Ryan Pinney and head coach Elizabeth Wells. Now we were lucky enough to get a quick interview with them. Let's take a look. Assistant coach and mentor Ryan Pinney, head coach Elizabeth Wells with two other swimmers departed for Glasgow yesterday to join the contingent in the Commonwealth Games. Stanford Kawale and Colin Akara are looking forward to this event and they say they have been training hard for this. The yeah, pressure is on but I think we've both done the work and we're ready to deliver um, good results. It's very overwhelming but um, about two days of travel ahead uh, but hopefully we'll get some good rest on the way there and once we get there we'll be excited and ready to swim hard. The two boys will be joined by four other Brisbane based PNG swimmers. Unfortunately, Ryan Pinney won't be taking part in this event, but he will be coaching and mentoring the swimmers. Yeah, I'll be assisting coaching with uh, six swimmers and, this, and I'll also be there as an athlete liaison with the Oceana. Head coach Miss Wells says this will be a good preparation for 2015 Pacific Games for our PNG swimmers. Competition. Um, this is this is a very good 
preparation made for the CIFO Games next year. Uh, yeah, they're, they're excited and we hope for some good times. They will meet the rest of the swim team in Glasgow who are already settling in at the Games Village. Unfortunately for the swimmers remaining back in the country, training and preparations will continue for their next tournament in lay next month, plus the TODs Championships in September, PNG Games this year and the 2015 Pacific Games next year. The opening of the Commonwealth Games started today and the Games will continue or go for two weeks, so good luck to Team PNG. Unfortunately, viewers, we've come to the end of our show. That's all we have for you tonight. Before we go, always remember to buy our very own PNG made Coca Cola can or bottle. It's sweet and it's very refreshing. With that, Coca Cola is also giving you a chance to win yourself some great giveaway prizes. Now, all you have to do is text FIFA to 1661 or 1661 and you automatically go into the draw, and who knows, you could be the lucky winner. Now, if you have any sports-related stories or feature stories and would like us to cover it for you, you can send us an email to sportsscene at mtv.com.pg or check us out on our Facebook page and post to us or you check up all your latest sporting updates. Thank you so much once again for all your company. We certainly enjoyed um, having you on the show tonight. Until next week, I'm Gordon Eki. Good night.